Hi, I'm Raj, and if you haven't been to my channel, it's great to see you here. About a month back, I started building this chat-based AI native calendar event scheduling app, and that's quite a mouthful. And now, a month later, it's in great shape and also being tested by a group of users. And also, there is a waitlist in place where you can add your email if you're interested and you will get notified when you get access. I've learned quite a lot by building this app, and in this content, I'm going to talk about how I brought a simple idea into an actual app and also explain you in detail how it works internally and also how I built it. So with that in mind, let's break this content down into subsections. First, I'm going to talk about how I started with this idea and also what open source projects inspired me to start this journey. Next, we're going to talk about what this app can do in its current state. That means I'm going to walk you through the app and explain to you all the features of the app. And once you understand step two, then we're going to talk about the core architecture behind the app and how it works internally. In this step, we will also be looking into some code base so that you can understand it better. The app is not open source, it's closed source for now, but I will walk you through the important code snippets that make the app actually work. The idea was inspired by two apps. The first app is called Morphic, where the author used Virtual's AI SDK to build a perplexity clone, where you can ask for anything and the app would answer you based on the internet search results. And not only that, this app can also stream React components to be rendered as part of the AI search results. And Morphic also used OpenAI function colon to do the web search. The next app was Cal.com. Cal.com helped me understand OAuth integrations. OAuth is nothing new. So if you have used Next Auth, you might have already used OAuth integrations to integrate Google or GitHub logins. But what Cal.com did was it enabled me to understand and build custom OAuth integrations without using any libraries. I even talked about this in one of my previous contents, which didn't get too many views, sadly. So my idea was to kind of merge these two concepts into one app. First, we let the user integrate their third-party app using OAuth integration. In our case, it's going to be Google Calendar. And once integrated, we build a few APIs to create, read, update, and delete calendar events. Then we pass on these APIs to OpenAI function call and interface and use OpenAI's chat completion API to talk to the language model. So when you chat with the AI and ask it to check your calendar for you, it knows that, all right, this person is trying to read as calendar events and I need to use the read calendar API function call to get back the information. And it would simply call this function and get me back the answer. That's pretty much it. So what we're doing is that we're essentially given the language model, a bunch of tools so that it can use the tools to complete the task for us. So this is essentially how agents work. Agents use tools to complete tasks for us. Let me give you a walkthrough of this app and all its features. If you go to the landing page, I've clearly explained everything that you can do on this app. The first thing that you can do is you can create, delete, read, and update calendar events on your integrated calendar. In our case, it's Google Calendar. And also when it creates the meeting, I have added a small API to check for the availability before booking. In order to check availability of a person that you're booking an event with, that person needs to give a free busy access to you. And this free busy access only tells you if the person is free or busy at the specific time range. And also you can give other users of the app free busy access to your calendar inside the app and also see who's given you access to their calendars. And if you go to the Google Calendar API documentation, you can see all the APIs that you can use as part of the OAuth integration. All the APIs that I talked about to create, delete, patch, and get calendar events are available here. For this app, I need access to the following scopes during the OAuth flow so that I can efficiently manage the user's calendar. For example, I need access to user profile. I need access to calendar.event scope. And then I need access to calendar.accessControlList scope. And I need access to calendar.freebusy scope. And I need access to calendar.readonly scope. All right, with that being said, let's try to log into our app. The login is pretty simple, and I've used NextAuth 
and use Google OAuth for this purpose. And you can see that during login, I only request open ID information, email and profile information. Once I'm in, you can see that we have a few tabs. We have a chat and we have an apps tab and we have a profile tab. Chat is where you talk to your AI. Apps is where you do your OAuth integration to your calendar. And profile is where you maintain who has access to your calendar and also information about the people who have given you access to their calendars as free busy readers. Now, the next job for us is to install or integrate our Google Calendar using OAuth. Once I click install, I'm taken to an OAuth flow where I give access to all the following scopes that we talked about. And at the end of this flow, I get access token, refresh token, and access token expiry information. And I'm gonna save all this information in my database for this user. With this information, I can use Google Calendar SDK and talk to the calendar APIs. All right, now that's done, let me go back to chat and ask if you've got a meeting in our calendar today. You can see that it's calling an API to get the information and using the response from the API, it gives us an answer along with the streamed UI. And if we ask it to create a meeting with someone, then you can see that it's first checking the availability of the person. And if the person hasn't given you access to their calendar, then it will also tell us. But we can still go ahead and book a meeting, uh, even without the availability information. Or we can ask the person to add us as a free busy reader on their calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Sammy's account and add this email as part of the people who can access Sammy's calendar. Then I'm going to come back to my main login and try the same thing again. Now you can see that it's first checking for the availability and also booking the meeting only if the person is free. And since the function call runs in a loop, you can check availability with multiple people. So if I ask it to book a meeting with five people on a certain day or time, it would check availability for all the five people before booking a meeting. That's super cool. So with this, what you can do is you can just essentially check if all your friends are free on a certain time on a certain day. Now, if I want to update the time or add new people to the meeting, I can simply ask the AI to do it. And it will use the update calendar API and does the job for me. The same goes for the delete meetings as well. You can delete multiple events at the same time. The AI is smart enough to call delete events in a loop until it's done. Now, the question is, what if you no longer want to share your calendar with this app? You can simply go click on delete app and that will remove all the token information from the app. And you will no longer be able to access any of your calendar APIs and you would have to go through the OAuth flow once again. I hope you've seen all the features of the app. Now it's time to talk about the architecture. The app architecture looks like this. We have a frontend which talks to our Next.js backend. And we also have a Postgres database with Drizzle Orem. And then we have an interface with LLM. I'm using OpenAI, but essentially you can use any language model that supports function column. The language model interface is pretty simple. I have a bunch of APIs that I've created for create, read, delete, update, and check availability. And I add these APIs as functions to my language model interface. If I ask a question, then I hit my Next.js action. And then I call the language model with this question. And the language model rightly identifies which function to call and sends me the information of the functions to call. For example, the name of the function and the arguments. And this function gets executed on a backend and the response of the function is returned back to the language model. And it uses the response to give me a final answer. At the time I call the function, I also stream React components from within the function to update my UI to keep things super interactive. This is not a new concept. You can see plenty of information online on code bases like Morphic and also the official AI SDK chatbot. That's pretty much it with regards to the architecture. 
With regards to the code base, uh, it's a simple Next.js app built with AI SDK and a simple Postgres database. There is an apps folder where all the logic to install and delete the OAuth apps live. And using the tokens, I'm building a few APIs for accessing calendar, checking availability, and also maintaining my access control list locally. And then I use the APIs to build OpenAI function calls where you can see that I call Google Calendar API and also stream the UI back to the client and pass the function calls onto my stream text API from AI SDK, which lives inside my agent file. This file is the core of my app and also have a prompt to guide the language model. The prompt is fairly simple. I just give it some clear rules on what to do and what not to do. And that's pretty much it. I think it's great if all the parties involved in a meeting use this app so that all of them can see who's got access to their calendar and also who's given them access to their calendar. If you want to test this app, you can add your email to the waiting list. But if you're a company and you need to give access to your employees to use this tool, feel free to drop me an email at support at AICal. Dot chat. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.